You need typing for smart match to make sense, we found out over the years. The hard way, I guess, in Perl 5. Uh, since Perl 5 will never have typing, at least I don't see it happening, and a lot of other people don't either, uh, it's going to be only of limited usefulness and still a source of confusion. So it has been marked experimental in 5.20 and potentially going to be deprecated in the future. But the word is not out on that yet. We have subroutine signatures, I already said something like that. Just arrived with 5.20, synthetic sugar, no real name parameters. And in Pill, five, in pill 6, subroutine signatures are really part of multi-method dispatch. But it's nice to have subroutine signatures nonetheless in 5. I guess Perl was one of the last languages to have something like that for the subroutines. So what are name parameters in Perl 6 like? Well. You can specify, use the colon, everyone would want a colon. Well, we use it here for name parameters. So the name of the name parameter is name. The default, if you don't specify it, it has a default of you. And it just says it here. So if I call it A without any parameters, it says, hey, you. And if we call it with name Orlando, it says, hey, Orlando. Now, what the heck is that? Well, that's actually a, uh, a pair. Of course, you know the fat comma in Perl 5. If you do that in Perl 6 and ask what it is, it's actually a pair. Um, if you have a Perl representation of it, you get this. Again, fat comma. This is just another way of saying this. Colon, key, Smaller than, string, greater than. Very easy, few characters to type. If you ask what that is, it's a pair. And if you ask what the Perl representation of that is, you get the same thing. So that's just an, it, for a lot of Perl 5 people, this looks very strange. What the heck is that? But it's just a pair, nothing else. So what's multi-method dispatch? Well, you can have multiple subroutines with the same name, but with different parameters. So if I call this subroutine with a number, it will say number. If I call this subroutine with a string, it will say string. So I call it with a number, it says 40, number 42. If I call it with a string, it says string foo. It's as easy as that. So what is this typing you're talking about there? Well, if you put a string into a variable like that and you say it, it will just say foo. Great, it works. However, if you say this variable is a number, and you try to put a string in it, it will actually say, type check failed. You can't put a string into a number. That's what it says. Expected number, but got string. So if you mark this as a string and put a string in it, it just works again. You might think, well, all of this type checking here, isn't that going to be like really heavy? It's going to be really CPU intensive. Well. It's a very hot code path, and we optimize it a lot. And you should realize that everywhere in Perl 6 where you do something, we already have a type under it. If you say my dollar $A, you're just saying my any dollar $A. So the type checking is happening all the time already. So use types when you want to. It's not going to add to the runtime of your program. It's going to help you develop your programs much faster because you get better error results, error reports. So what are the Perl 5 features in Perl 6? Well, actually, we only have one. It's called use v5. Uh, it, of course, stays hard to integrate and mimic the uh, indescribable. <coughs> so what is use 5? It was actually originally started by a Tim Toady. And it's now being maintained by Frogs, aka Tobias Leich. He's actually the Git tip of the week person on Perl Weekly, I understand. So please, if you want to give some money to the guy, I know he can use it because he has a small family, two kids growing up, third on the way, I think. Ugh. And the idea is to, to re implement Perl just like we did with 
Rakuto Perl 6. So Perl 6 has a grammar. It's parsed by Perl 6 into something that you can execute. Without getting too technical, it's called ASTs, abstract syntax trees, and it goes from there. Um, you're not going to have XS uh, as we know it, at least, uh, in V5. So we can only do pure Perl versions of code. But you will be able to call Perl 5 code from Perl 6. And you already can, actually. And your variables are visible between each other because once it is actually compiled, internally, it hardly knows any difference between the two anymore because they're compiled down to the same code. That's going to be, I think, the, uh, the big thing for migrating people from Perl 5 to Perl 6. It actually passes 10% of the, uh, the Perl 5 test suite at the moment. This number is very skewed because any test in the Perl 5 test suite that has a skip in it does not work at the moment. Um, skip actually uses goto. And for goto, you need labels. Well, the labels we now have in Perl 6, or Rakuto Perl 6, I should say, the goto we don't have just yet, but it will come. And V5 will actually be part of the next Rakuto star distribution, as far as I know. I'm not entirely sure when the next Rakuto star will be. It could be this month, it could be next month. So what do we need for Perl 6 adoption? I think we need a good introduction ebook. I'm just looking at somebody there who's been not hackling a lot. Uh, we need more modules and CPAN support. Actually, at the moment, you can already upload to CPAN, and we need better performance. Anyway, the ebook, uh, rumor has it that a certain someone is working on that. I got an outline. Hey, cool. But anyway, don't let us stop you from uh, writing your own or just blog about your experiences. Just let us know what you did. If we're talking about uh, CPAN support, we can actually upload Pro 6 distributions to CPAN already. You can actually uh, find them on CPAN already. Uh, you cannot actually install them yet from CPAN. There's a program called Panda that we use in the Pro 6 community for installing uh, modules. Um, since distributions are actually usually um, tarred and gzipped on, on CPAN, we need like archive tar on Perl 6, and that's actually what, what the blocker is at the moment for being able to install modules from CPAN. However, we're going to start be starting Perl CPAN modules uh, later this year to Perl 6, so that's going to work out. Um, better performance. More VM is now completely standalone, unlike earlier this year. Uh, we actually are creeping towards Perl 5 in some areas of uh, execution of uh, uh, Perl 5. The, if you load moves, that is. <laughs> but yeah, Perl 6 comes with moves, so yeah. Um, we have a lot of code introspection uh, built into more VM um, that's already being used to actually optimize the abtex syntax trees that I was talking about earlier. So we can actually um, do some optimizations already. And it's now actually being used for a Google Summer of Code project to develop JIT just in time. So actually will generate machine code when it can for you. And this is very exciting uh, because actually earlier the, uh, last week, uh, we actually have the first jitted execution uh, of code. It's, it's a very simple example. Just calling the same sub that has very little in it, gets inlined and turned into machine code. It's very nice, it works. It's not very useful yet, but it's a beginning. So why would you use Pro 6 in production? I think the main reason for that in the future is going to be saner uh, implicit and explicit multicore programming like channels and promises and supplies. Um, no versioning issues with modules. I'll get back to that just in a moment. And of course, we have lots and lots of cool features, which means happier programmers and happier programmers work better and are more optimal, I would say. 
So, <coughs> to give you an idea of the versioning, everybody knows test. This is the test module that we have in Pro 6, it's just called test. And if you use that, you can say, okay, All right. everybody who's done any testing, I hope everybody did. Who's done no testing? Good. If you actually in Pro 6 put this inside a scope, it won't know about the OK outside the scope. So all of, your, all of the loading of modules, all of your imports, are lexically scoped. This is very important. This means that you can actually have multiple modules with the same name loaded at the same time, as long as you don't do it in the same scope. Right? Um, this is very important. That basically also means, together with the, the, the test, use test, you can actually specify which author you want the module to be from and which versions you want to have. And so rather than in the past, when in Pearl 5 you said use this module from cPanel or something, you have to change your mind there because in Pearl 6 you will actually have to say, I want to have that version of that module and that author because that will make it more maintainable, right? You, you can be sure that the API will never change because that model will never change. If it works for you, it will continue to work for you. I think that's very important for the maintainability for Perl 6 in the future. The implicit and explicit uh, whoops, multi core processing. Um, this is a little program that just randomly sleeps. I do 10 times and I print the number here. It takes, on average, about five seconds, which makes sense. What the heck is that? Well, that's actually just short for zero, two, apart from the 10. No, this is 10 times, zero to nine. If you want 11 times, you say 11. All right. Um, now, if you're, not, if you're not interested in the order in which these things are happening, you can actually do this in parallel. And there's one easy way for doing that. It's called the start function. The start will actually put this into a separate thread, if you, might, if you will. It will return a promise. We're going to do that 10 times. Even though it's a for loop, we do it, if we put a do in front of it, we'll actually return the values that we've seen inside the for loop. So we get 10 promises here, and the await will actually wait until all 10 promises are met. So you get a random order. The amount of CPU is roughly the same, but the wall clock is a lot less. And this is what you already can do in Pro 6 right now. If you have any, any type of stuff that you can easily parallelize, just use start and wait for the result, and you're done. There's also implicit multi-core, multi-processing, concurrency, whatever you call it. And these are junctions. Hello, junction. Anyone remember quantum superpositions of Damien Conway? Well, they're called junctions here. And so that's just any one, two, three, any of them. So if you ask, is this true? Is that equal to one? It says, well, yes, no, and no. And if you want to really want to know a Boolean version of that, you can call the so operator. So tell me, what is it, so? And it will say, well, any of them is true, so this is true. So that's a very easy uh, junction. Here, I'm doing a, picking a random number from 0 to 99, for instance, 71. And I'm going to see if I'm going to put any number from 0 to 99 in here. And I'm going to see if this is actually true. Now, if this is actually true, Yes, because they're all in the same range, so by definition, this is going to be true. However, it's going to be 1,000, then it's a chance of 1 in 10, whether it's true or false. 
Now, the idea is that types like this, things like this, will be automatically split up over multiple threads for you. So it won't be a single core doing all the calculations, it will be multiple cores doing it for you. However, that's not there yet, but all of the framework for it is there. And uh, now that we have actually concurrency in, in, uh, with using more VM and JVM, we can actually start working on that. So, how can you try Pearl 6 as a user? Well, this is Rakuto with plenty of modules to try. Um, Rec uh, sorry, Rakuto Star. Next version will have uh, V5. Get it at here, Rakuto.org downloads a star. If you are a tester of Perl 6, you can actually get something that is an equivalent of Perl Brew. It's called Rakuto Brew. And you can actually just get it on GitHub. Uh, if you want to start contributing, it's really easy. You just make a directory somewhere. You clone Rakuto. You go into the directory. You do configure. do make install. And you're done. This takes, if you have any decent machine, about two, three minutes. And you're done. Oh, and of course, enough bandwidth for getting more and getting all sorts of other stuff from GitHub for you. So, <coughs> are you interested in seeing some Perl 6 examples? Well, this is a Rosetta Code project that actually has, are we now number four, Larry? Thereabouts. Thereabout. So, there are only three more uh, languages that have more examples of code on Rosetta Code. Uh, that's the Perl 6 advent calendar. Uh, every year in December, we have a blog every day about newer features of Perl 6, and it's proven to be a large source of inspiration for a lot of people finding out how you can do things with Perl 6. However, how far back you go, there's a bigger chance of things actually not quite working anymore, because some features have changed. We are not completely stable that in, re in that respect. You can find that there. Uh, Jonathan has a lot of presentations with examples, and in general, is the, the case is with Jonathan's presentations is that everything works. So that's always good to find. You can find those here. If you want to get support for Perl 6, we have the Perl 6 channel on IRC Freenode. Um, please don't hesitate to come there. There's a friendly bunch there, and uh, everybody wants to help you with it. We have a lot of blogs on uh, Planetaria. Um, there's an article for coming from Pool 5. It's maybe a little dated, but it's still pretty, pretty good. If you really want to get into the nitty gritty, we have the actually synopsis. So there's plenty of ways that you can actually um, find support for your, th your work with Pool 6. So I guess, and that's the way how the camel will be decocooning in the coming years. And I would say, are there any questions? Wow. Ah. So I went to make a Perl 6 module, and modules.perl6.org explains how to do this and go modify the ecosystem module and so on. Huh. Would you recommend that or CPAN right now? Um, right now, I would recommend that. Um, uh, hopefully, in the, by the next release of uh, Rakuto, which would be um, about four weeks from now, uh, uh, that would be different, and I would actually suggest CPAN. But at the moment, we're in, in the final stages of getting that all working. And it, it's all very exciting, and I wish I could have told you, use CPAN now, but that's not true yet. So, working on that. Just notes up there on it. Sorry, you want to put the. the, the you put a link on, on. There's a wiki page for presentation yeah. materials. You go to the conference wiki. Okay, well, I, I, I guess I'll, 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 put, I'll put the slides up and I'll make, a, make yes. a link to it. Yeah. Okay, I will do that. Anybody else? No? No? Okay. Well, uh, thank you anyway for uh, our White Camel Awards. It was very nice to get it from the community. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing else? <laughs>
<laughs> no, no, 